I first met uh, Jay in 2006 when we were um, both working at Sam Houston State. He was on the faculty there on the piano and theory, and I was the associate director of band. So I've known him almost, well, I guess I knew him, well, since 2000, fall 2006. Well, Jay and I made a lot of music together over the years, and I first met him in 2007, and uh, he was hired to uh, a company, the Kingwood Corral, and then we had a new, new full-time position open, uh, search later uh, that year, and uh, he started working full-time here in 2008. Um, and he uh, played for the concert choir, and he taught all kinds of music classes, and he was just a force. Jay Watley was uh, just leaving a position at uh, Sam Houston State University, doing a very similar job. We had worked with him as an accompanist on several things. Uh, he was part of an applicant pool of probably 150 to 175 people from all over, literally the world. We had people from Europe, we had people from Asia, we had people from all over the United States. We had Juilliard graduates, we had Eastman graduates, and he was by far the best candidate. Jay Watley was my dean. Um, he hired me. Um, I came in last year, around December, we got a phone call, hey, you applied for the full-time position, we have a 70 percenter position open in the spring, um, would you like it? Would you, and so I come interview. So I interviewed with both him and um, Susie Goss from the math department to try to see about that. We were both deep. We were, we were co-equal and he was so wonderful to work with. He just was a brilliant, analytical, uh, genuinely um, wonderful people person that was just one of the best people I've ever worked with. He was someone who could just walk in with a smile, always. And so his life was just one of those things that help, it helps everybody. And just a fun-loving person, you know, just uh, always having a good time, didn't take himself very seriously, uh, just really passionate about what he uh, did. And then when I moved over here to Lone Star, he was here, he had been here already a year. Uh, before I got here, and he was a tremendous colleague, just a great uh, uh, pianist, but just a, a good friend, somebody I could count on. His life uh, was an example for our students that one failure does not end your life, that you have to get back up again and again and again and again. And so um, he was a great example of that as someone who had great talent, but he worked really, really hard at maximizing his talent. So Jay is kind of a, a unique person in that, first of all, he, he was extremely intelligent, uh, one of the most intelligent people that I've, I've really known. He was a virtuoso level musician, and on top of all of that, he had really extraordinarily fine people skills. I don't care who you were, if you were someone who swept the floors or the president of the college or the chancellor of the system, he treated everybody with a great deal of respect. He was able to pull the best out of everybody and he took a lot of pride in being able to do that. It was important to him that people felt comfortable, that people felt valued, that people felt like they were important to him when he talked to them. People will tell you who knew him that they felt like, when they were talking to him, that they were the only person in the world. He was that attentive to them. I think his tenacity of life um, and his joy at life, even though he, uh, he knew he had some health issues, um, he did not live his life in fear of those health issues. And I think that's an example for, for all of us, not just the students, but for friends like me. Could read anything, play anything. He's an incredible organist, and I was just really wowed by his performing with the group, uh, with the chorales, with the choirs in in uh, Italy that year in 2007. And uh, I just never was uh, surprised after that with anything that he could do musically. He just it seems like he could do everything. You know, it was music, and then coming in and being dean, and then arts and everything together and just 
it's 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 something to inspire, I think, and something that you don't really think about when you're younger. And as you get older, you're like, well, here's all these steps I could go to. And then as you get older and you look back and you're like, I have accomplished some stuff. So I think it's pretty inspiring. His most recent um, musical post outside of uh, teaching was as the uh, organist at First Methodist Church downtown Houston, which is a very prestigious post that he was able to get. Jay was truly accomplished in both piano and organ, and that's a rarity. Uh, they're really two completely different instruments. Even though they, the keyboards may look the same, they're very, very different instruments with completely different repertoire and touch, and, and he ded dedicated himself to being the best that he could be in both of those things. We're here to tell you, I think he'd be proud, he'd be very proud of his degrees, of course, but he really, he really loved being an organist at First Methodist Church. I think he had found his calling there as a huge organ that he made into, uh, he, he, he put it to great use. He grew up in Mineola, and uh, he had uh, apparently a very interesting, he always alluded to just uh, uh, having a crazy life when he was younger, and I know it took him a while to get through school, uh, but I think he just liked to, to do things and, and try things. He got married last year, his uh, husband Chris, um, they were very close, and you know I know Chris is very sad to lose Jay. Um, and he comes from a, you know, a, a very loving family up in East Texas. Um, you know, his mother died about a year ago, and that was hard on him that she had cancer, and um, you know, still has, his dad is still, still up there, and he has brothers and sisters. They're good East Texas folks who, uh, I'm sure they're hardworking, very honest uh, folks who live in very small town, rural Texas. Uh, they were a little bit in awe of Jay and all the things that he had done and all the places he was going and the people he was working with, but it was clear that they, they dearly loved him. Uh, the photographs that you saw, everything from his prom picture to pictures when he was a small boy with his brothers and sisters playing, and it, you could tell there was, it was a very loving, warm family. He loved his family very much, um, but he has a big musical family. You know, and uh, the entire city of Houston, the music, it's, it's a fairly tight knit musical community. The, the classical music, you know, the classical slash, you know, vocal music slash church music community, uh, everybody sort of knows everyone, and uh, everyone's shocked and saddened by his loss because he affected so many people. Everybody thinks of Jay as a musician and all the things he did as a musician, and I do too, because that was the first 50 years of his life, let's say. But what a lot of people, other than the small group of us who work in administration on this campus and maybe around the system, what most people aren't aware of is that he had kind of found a niche for himself. Um, you know, he had spent all this time as a, as a wonderful musician and he took a step into, and I kind of encourage him, to take this dean's position that he had. And he was a little bit concerned. You know, this is way outside of my everything I've done till now. Should I do it? And I think he found himself. And I think what he discovered about himself is that he could he really had the ability to elevate those around him. When he first started working here, he was very fond of uh, brushing his teeth in the car on the way. And so he would he would pull up in the parking lot in his Toyota Corolla, and he would still be brushing his teeth uh, while texting while driving with his, with his knees, you know, don't do that at home. But he, you know, if you're an organist, you're used to having your hands and feet doing four different things all at the same time. And it, I, I'm amazed he didn't get in an accident. I loved when he would come in here. He could always come in with a smile. I know I already mentioned that, but he'd come in with a smile. And he, would, he always had those suits. He had, it was either like a gray suit and like a bright shirt and a, and a tie, and it would just, between that and the smile, like the whole room would light up. And it was just, it, any time that, you know, and you would see that anywhere, but I just remember him like walking in and knock, knock, hey, and just always with a smile. And it just, it was, it was just something that you'll carry with you. When he became chair, uh, you know, we had to interact on, on a few things and I really appreciated the way he, he uh, 
just treated uh, uh, us as faculty, but the main thing, just the way he treated the students, he was very compassionate with them. He was always willing to help everyone who needed, especially the ones that, uh, students that really needed help. Mm -hmm. But his door was always open and the students always felt uh, very comfortable going to him. But that's how I remember Jay, is just with a smile on his face and, and uh, mischievous for the most part, you know, a lot of times. But uh, his brain was always on and always working and, and sometimes maybe overthinking things. But, but uh, that was just him. And I really, uh, I like that about him. And, and uh, he was just open and honest. His greatest accomplishments are the legacy he has left in all of his students. And if you were Facebook friends with some of those students, you would see the outpouring of love and showing how he had changed their lives. Uh, he was just an outstanding teacher. You know, besides uh, just watching his and listening to his musicianship. Jay is one of those people who's done a whole bunch of little things that have compounded to create who he was and create the person that people would go to for advice. Um, and it wasn't just one little accomplishment. I think it was everything in his life put together that created everything. Integrity. I think he was a person of deep faith. He had a deep faith in God. He was a devout Christian. Um, and, I, and I think uh, because he suffered uh, intolerance and injustice in his life, I think he had a special place in his heart for people who had suffered the same thing. I think he tried to do unto others as he wanted done to himself. You know, and that, that's a very good core value to have. He was a light. He was somebody that would inspire you. Somebody that would push you to be better um, without you even knowing that you're like, getting pushed. I think he wanted the best uh, of everyone and, and for everyone. And uh, I think he thought of himself last, you know. But uh, again, he was always thinking about how to make everything uh, better and, uh, and, and tweak everything. And he always had suggestions for things and, so, and sometimes things that wouldn't work or that, you know, maybe we had to look at it differently but he was always working on, on making everything better for everyone around him, faculty and students. One thing that we could learn from him um, that I could say to any student is to be curious. And if, if, if we can teach students how to think rather than how to learn facts, um, then we've done our job. And I think he did that very, very well.